you make your money, after you get your ring, you decide to talk about it, why don't you talk about it during the season when it was going on? Why, don't, why, why you didn't say, I don't want to be no part of Oh, now, nah. so you look like a snitch. You know what I mean? Why you got to talk about it after? Why you, that's, that's my problem, you know. Why, why nobody say anything while it was going on? This fascinates me, and I'm going to bring this to my entire table in a minute, but first I want to go live to Jeff Passan, who's been covering this extraordinarily well for us. Jeff, what reaction are you hearing around the sport to what Big Poppy said? You know, Greeny, a lot of people actually agree with David Ortiz, and they agree with the, the sentiment that if you are so angry about this, if you are so aggrieved by it, why didn't you come out and say something when you were with the team? Why didn't you try to put a stop to this? But I would argue that it's not conditional when somebody talks. It's not when he does it. It's not why he does it. It's did he do it or did he not do it? And in Mike Fires' case, him coming out and speaking the truth, and that's what matters here, Greeny, the truth is what ultimately led to this great cheating scandal being exposed. And as a net positive for baseball, I applaud him for doing that, despite the fact that now his peers have this sentiment and feeling about him. Yeah, it's a really interesting um, dilemma, if you will. Again, I'm going to bring it to my table in a minute. Meanwhile, Jeff, for you, as this outrage sort of continues to mount, there is more and more pressure being applied on the commissioner to strip the World Series championship from 2017 from the Astros. Has he considered it? and might he into the future? Well, inside of Rob Manfred's inner circle, this was brought up before his report was issued on January 13th. And he decided ultimately, and this is his decision to make, that he was not going to strip the title. Now, he could go back and he would be accused of being a flip-flopper or of cowing to public pressure, but I think if there's anything that could ultimately get him and Major League Baseball through this scandal, it would be taking away the title. Now, Buster only has suggested a, a public censure, and that's another thing that could be on the table. But stripping the title would send a clear message that we are listening to you, players. We are listening to you, fans. And we do not believe that this 2017 championship is valid. Yes. Sometimes changing your mind is not a sign of weakness. It is a sign it's of okay. understanding and it's reasonableness. <laughs> totally agree. And, yeah. and that's the thing. When, when you come out like Rob Manfred has publicly and say, I don't want to start this whole slippery slope situation where we're putting asterisks on things and when we're going back and adjudicating history all over again, well, you know what? Desperate times may call for desperate measures, and these are most certainly desperate times for Major League Baseball. Yes, it's really well said. Jeff, you're the best. Thank you, my man. Have a great weekend. We'll check in with you Monday. There'll no doubt be a whole other round of stuff to react to. Meanwhile, Jose Canseco, who was the guy who famously blew the cover on the PED steroid scandal in a book that he wrote, had this to say on Twitter about Big Poppy. He said, Mike Fires, the truth is never wrong no matter when you say it. It's never too late for the truth. Big Poppy, I'm a fan since the first time I met you in Minnesota, but get off this kid. You made it through the PED era. This is so interesting to me. And so I've got, you know, my, my crew here, all of you guys are athletes from different sports. And I just want to hear, when you hear Big Poppy say, I'm mad at Mike Fires because he didn't do anything when he was there and it was benefiting him. Now he's no longer there, and now he's coming out and talking, so he's a snitch. Big, I mean, uh, big Swagoo, what do you say? <laughs> Sorry. Swagoo, what, yeah, how, what, what's that? He's a snitch. Yeah. If he didn't say anything while I was going on, like, listen, the silence in the moment is worse. Like, we, you go throughout the annals of history, the silence in the moment when things are happening, when you can get rid of some of the stuff that will happen as a result of what's going on is the worst. Now, you got to find out, like, and, and Jose Canseco is right, and Jeff is right. The truth is never wrong. It's yeah. never a bad time to tell the truth right. when somebody asks you. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. But when he goes and offers that information, it's either based in bitterness because you were there. Right. Right? And you knew no matter if you were on another team or if you were in Houston, yeah. when you came out with this, you were going to be highly scrutinized yeah. by players in the league. Exactly. This is, I tell you about code all the time, mm -hmm. right, in leagues. Yeah. 
It's ultimate sin. Absolutely. What do you think, Des? Ultimate sin. I agree with Swagoo. Um, I think Jeff, I absolutely disagree with Jeff. It, it matters when you say it and actually why you say it. If you were quiet and benefiting from it while it happened, and now all of a sudden you left and now you want to spill the beans, you're a snitch. And I think it's a problem bringing that man into any organization. If this happened in the NFL and you brought a guy like that on the team that I was a part of, the first thing I would do is I would go to management. Because GMs got to understand one thing in the locker room that's important. <laughs> it's chemistry. If you bring in the pariah, you bring in a guy who's going to be cancerous to the locker room, that disrupts the chemistry of the whole team. And so you have to ask him, why did you bring this guy here? Because we feel as though we can't trust him. He dishonored the code. Yeah. He's going to mess up our chemistry. Think, like, each of the three of us are coming at it from the perspective of having been in part of a team, yeah. part of a locker room, and understanding the culture that goes in there and the trust level you have to have with the guy next to you. So for me, I'd be surprised at any player to not agree with what David Ortiz said. Yeah. That's been part of a team sport. Because you know the things that you see on a daily basis and the things that go on. Now, look, the world needed to know this. Major League Baseball needed to know this. Right. That doesn't go away from the fact 100%. that you don't Absolutely. want a teammate being the guy to come forward with it. And I think every guy that's been a part of a team would feel exactly the same way. So even to hear Jose Canseco take the opposite approach is a little bit surprising. See, he, to me, there's a difference between being a whistleblower and being a snitch. A whistleblower is someone who sees yeah. wrongdoing yeah. and reports it in for the what moment. they believe. Well, right. for what they believe is the greater good. Yeah. yeah. The the snitch is the person who sees wrongdoing and reports it for their own benefit or to try and damage someone else. I guess we can't sit here and tell you what we think Mike Fire's um, motivation was in all of this. But sometimes the snitch, we can all agree that we're better off knowing what yeah. happened than not knowing what happened. Right? So that's what I'm true. trying to figure out how to true. put into all of this. If Gee, we're going to criticize right, him, let me, we're better off knowing let me, him. Let me simplify for you because when you think about when Fires came out and said this, you benefited from it, yeah, right. right? So that that's the thing. Like, if, if if we all together, right, and we go commit a crime, and, and I say while we in, while we holding the bank up, mm -hmm. hey, it's Mike Greenberg, Desmond Howard, and Tim Legler, right. and I'm Marcus Spears, and this is what we doing. I'm a snitch, but I'm stopping us benefiting, right. which is the reason I'm telling, yeah, right. right? So now, if I go later and call all three of you guys out, right. and I done disassociated myself <laughs> from the position <laughs> that we all were in right. at the same time, yeah. I'm snitching on y'all. Yeah. Yeah. You have a wonderful way of cutting directly to the point. <laughs> Man. I think that is right. So, so now, I guess it is an interesting question, because Fires is still playing, he's still pitching. We just showed yeah. you a video of him, you know, in the A's. I like it, I like it to remember when D'Angelo Russell did the video? Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. That's my point. The Lakers I was, I was had to get rid that. of it. I was thinking yeah. about it's, that. Exactly. But how yeah. about how about the former <laughs> Astros who are on other teams now? Is anyone looking at them funny? Like you cheated me. Right. Now you're my teammate. Yeah. Right. Maybe. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Without, Without a doubt. No Without questions. a shadow of a doubt. There's yep. no question. That guy walks in your locker room day one. There's no doubt. Yeah. You have yeah. a totally yeah. different perspective on that player than you would have. Yeah. Based I'm on the fact that you right were part now. of that. I'm yeah. telling y'all right now. Well, I'm from snitching. Ain't, ain't really a thing. But if the uh, people tell me I got a hundred years, I'm telling no everybody. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Singing like a bird. A perfect spot to like First 48, baby. <laughs> we're going back to football next. The NFL world is awaiting Tom Brady's decision, but there's a domino worth paying attention to, and we will next get up on ESPN.